What's happening, folks? It's your guy Rashad at Action Sports Bar back with another video. If you like these, please do let us know about it in the comments section. Check us out on our socials and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate it. We have so much to be thankful for, so um, that's what today's about. I'm not bullshitting with that uh, uh, negative energy, poor me, poor me, poor me stuff. Today we got business to take care of, and we in the right mindset. So I uh, got here early today. Um, what do we do? Uh, projects. I've been knocking projects. Uh, we're a sports bar, uh, and so we got sports memorabilia all up over the all over the building. But I got so much stuff at home that I've never even busted out uh, from back in my man cave days from my old house. So I've been a season ticket holder for the Seahawks, I guess since 98. So damn, I'm getting old. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, hella Seahawks stuff. Um, pretty much every year for birthdays, Christmas, any day, Father's Day, anything, I always tell people, they're like, what do you want? What do you want? I always say Seahawks stuff because that's my squad. And, you know, they never have the same stuff every year. So even if somebody got me a Seahawks sweater every single year, it would be a different sweater pretty much every year because they have different styles. Anyways, I got gang of Seahawks stuff. That's the, the, uh, the moral of that story. So since I got this giant sports bar and we've got so much room on the walls, I've been solely replacing stuff over the years, uh, getting rid of like old signs and old neon and old BS, you know, advertising for, for liquor and beer and replacing it with some Seahawks swag. So um, we've got a Sonics wall up because obviously I was a diehard Sonics fan. I emulated my game after Gary Payton. Nate, M M Nate McMillan was one of my favorite players of all time. That IQ, you could tell that cat was going to be a coach. Like if you ever watched him play, you just knew he was going to be a coach. So those old school Sonics team with Detlef Shrimp and obviously Sean Camp Rayman stops by here or used to stop by a little bit more back in the day. But uh, this is his Kent bar. And uh, so obviously we got love for Rain Man and all the greats, you know, uh, Xavier McDaniel. I mean, yeah, I keep going, but I'm a Sonics fan as well, even though they stole our team uh, after we got Kevin Durant. Like we all of a sudden get this Hall of Fame player and the stupid ass people of Seattle basically let some outside, outside guy take their team. And this is my point with Seattle fans all along is a lot of times they're so bandwagony that this is why they suck. No self-respecting team sh city should have let them take your NBA franchise the way that we let them take the Sonics. It's, it was sad. It, at the time, they were our only major championship winner, and we just let them. Anyways, that's a whole nother thing. But all of that is to say that we got a Sonics wall. And so been bringing in some Sonic stuff. We got a Kraken wall there, our new hockey team. So uh, we've just been putting up, uh, obviously we got all kinds of Seahawks stuff. So, you know, we're putting up stuff like this um, around the bar and, uh, you know, got here early to do that. So uh, Jamar will be in early, a little bit later, help me with that stuff, all that kind of facility stuff, hanging stuff, taking stuff down. He's, he's a huge help on all that stuff. Um, we got the... Um, I got a bar meeting coming next week, so uh, I got to tighten up the agenda for that. For me, I personally am one of those people, my staff knows this too, that we're going to have bar meetings pretty much every quarter no matter what. Um, I hold myself accountable to goals and standards uh, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. So I'm definitely going to hold the staff accountable uh, to the things that we talked about, at least on a quarterly basis. So uh, there's always good coaching. I tell the, you know, I tell the crew this all the time. I'm the type of personal trainer, like if you've ever been to the gym, I'm the type of personal trainer that while you're doing the exercises and you're in the workout, you're like, I fucking hate this guy because he's pushing me. Uh, but then when you look at the results, like at the end of 90 days, you're like, all right, all right, I see what he's doing. So uh, I can be a pain in the ass. I can be a little bit abrasive sometimes, sometimes maybe a little straightforward uh, in, in my coaching style, but I'm kind of old school and I believe that uh, that produced excellent results, those, that type of coaching. So uh, if you know I'm a little much for somebody, that's why I have good people around me who are softer and nicer. And so not everybody has to get the, uh, the, the, you know, the blunt, mean coaching all the time. We've got other managers who can help the, you know, more nurturing, handholdy type of, you did a good job, 
pat you on the head type of stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm all about positive reinforcement too. But, uh, you know, if you're fucking up, I will definitely tell you because that's my job. So, um, anyways, uh, got the bar meeting coming. So much cool stuff. Uh, the staff doesn't even know that we are changing the bar's name. So that will be uh, news to a lot of people. Uh, for them, the staff pretty much just Jade knows. We'll give them a chance to look at the new logo, which I'm loving, uh, and uh, we'll get them caught up and let them know what how they need to communicate this change, this branding change, this name change to uh, the staff or sorry to the regulars uh, when we announce it for June 1st. We're gonna switch and make it official on the 1st of June. Just boom, cold turkey. When you look around, I mean, shit. Like I said, I'm a Seahawks fan. It has been Seahawks Stadium. It was Quest. It was CenturyLink. And now it's Lumen Field. When they change the names of these places, they don't do some big, huge drum up lead up to it. They just say, okay, well, today, just so you know, starting today, we're Lumen. And so it seems to be that's the same with T-Mobile and uh, used to be called Safeco. It's they when they change them, they just fucking change them. So uh, we're going to do what the big boys do we're gonna do the same thing uh we'll launch it and announce it on the first we'll drop our website as well on the first uh so that people can kind of give them that as a landing page and that kind of explains the name change a little bit more too so uh all that's coming up in the bar meeting uh what else we got going on today we got uh it's tuesday so we got tacos uh actually i'll probably take the video back there so you guys get a chance to see um miguel put that together we've got the uh brisket spin in the smoker and then we put the pork shoulder in there and we do a smoked carnitas so it's real similar to like the the kind of standard uh traditional mexican carnitas uh slow uh braised pork except for we uh braise it in the smoker so it kind of gets both of them. Um, and then uh, you take it out. Traditionally, you could take it out and crisp up the meat. But uh, we keep ours pretty simple, man. And very, it's, you know, six six ingredients or so. Uh, and we just let the meat speak for itself. Same with the brisket. Not too crazy on our rub. Um, we just, we, we keep it simple. And let the meat and the, the thyme and the smoke kind of do all the work so uh we'll have the smoked brisket tacos uh which come with a homemade scratch made um chipotle aioli shout out to uh, my folks down in border grill las vegas for putting me on to chipotle aiolis holy moly a little bit different than theirs but goodness gracious shout out to chef mike minor doing his thing out in san diego now um but uh watching chef and all that great kitchen down there do their things uh was such a positive uh influence on me plus now i stole jill and having her here and her 15 years experience down there also uh helping out in the kitchen so that aioli is up uh goes with the smoked brisket then we make a scratch made um serrano and uh cilantro aioli too pretty bomb so thanks again to chef mike and that border grill crew for showing us how to uh really you know build a, a real flavorful aioli and even you know put us on to aiolis 15 years before everybody else started jumping on them. So um, shout out to y'all down there. Experience is a beautiful thing. Um, so that uh, Serrano Aioli goes with the Carnitas Taco. So two very simple, basic, two of our most popular ones today. I'm sure we'll probably sell out before the day's out. Uh, we've got our pars pretty well dialed in on that. We don't make too much and we we make enough to, to make everybody happy. So uh, anyways... Uh, Back at it like a crack at it. <laughs> Let's go. I can barely see my shit because my phone's charged. It's crazy. Hey, the streets is hot. Gotta take a chance, hit the slot. Might deck a bitch for the pot. Think I'm falling off, but I'm not. Yes, yeah, a hot boy summer. Streets is hot. Gotta take a chance, hit the slot. Might jack a bitch with a pot. Think I'm falling off, but I'm not. Yeah, it's a hot boy summer. Yo, running out of clock. Dark tints, everything stock. Like Minecraft, nigga, move a block. Put you on the bottom like the rock. Took a long time just to pop. Got a couple blue faces, now they wanna mop. 
Gotta run with it non-stop They wanna see me walk like a crip I need it fast like my whip Peel the roof back, nigga, then I dip Like my throwback phone, watch it flip Call Joe Mar for the juice for the sip We got another hit that these niggas can't skip When you this cold, they wanna catch you on a slip When you iced out, they wanna melt you for the drip Air them out like Alaska and tell them don't trip Gotta take a chance at the slot Might jack a bitch for the pot Think I'm falling off, bet I'm not Yeah, it's a hot boy, summer street is hot well, it was a good Tuesday, as usual, which is great for us. Uh, taco sales bring people in the door. Uh, they help drive liquor sales. They help introduce people to the bar. People try the different varieties and see what they like. So we love our Taco Tuesdays. And, um, you know, we used to do, like, gringo tacos, American Taco Bell-style tacos, Way back in the day when I when I first started here and first started managing and we slowly developed uh, a bunch of different taco recipes uh, over the last probably five years so um, we're always excited for Taco Tuesday around here we sell to put it in some kind of perspective we we usually sell on a Tuesday about 30 to 40 appetizers in the restaurant and that could be you know any of our appetizers chicken wings uh, chicken strips regular deep fried wings those kind of specials uh, pot stickers any of those we do about 30 to 40 on a given Tuesday um, the rest of this particular day we were right in that range we sold 32 um, Appetizers, which is our most selling, most popular selling food group, probably 90% of the time. Um, when it's not, it's tacos and food specials. So that day we actually wound up selling 33 orders of the special. So um, our kitchen is small, you know, uh, it's got a small footprint. It doesn't do, you know, a huge percentage of our overall sales, um, but it's effective and it's efficient for that little spot so for us anytime we sell more than 20 specials we're super excited about it so uh, to have 33 go on a day when these are pretty standard tacos for us we we love both of them the brisket and the uh, the smoked carnitas and they've been well received in the area too so just another good Tuesday um, <clears throat> we're happy where the taco program is we'll, we will condense our 16 specials down or 16 different recipes probably down to six the six best sellers and most popular um, and uh, yeah add those to the food truck catering menus if people want to try and do stuff like that as well too so uh, our overall food identity of smoke enhanced bar food covers a, a big wide swath of stuff. So tacos are in there and we love them. So good taco Tuesday.